Good morning. Today is Saturday, February 17th of 2024, and this is the 48th weigh-in. Good morning. <clears throat> Battery died on my scale. I'm going to have to go and get a replacement. I tried to still get the video. We'll see if I could cut that together. But to do the weigh-in over. Uh, <clears throat> we are up to 25 pounds on the preacher curls. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to have to change the board a bit up today because I have Muay Thai at like 10 o'clock. <clears throat> oh, yeah. There we are. Get it. Oh yeah, 15 it is. Okay. Yep, that's a pump. Whew. Ooh. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, I'll say the curls aren't a bad way of starting the day. Same thing with the triceps, but it does. I don't know why it feels a little weird. Um, I mean, part of it is I have done, ooh, yeah, um, the bigger muscles uh, first for the last six weeks. So 
It's part of the reason it would feel weird, but yeah, I don't know why. It just, uh, uh. I think it's also because I've always been conditioned to the notion of do your bigger muscles first. So, oh yeah, that's a good pump though. That's a good pump. They're definitely the freshest they could be. Ooh, <laughs> and the biceps are definitely the muscle that's lagging behind the most, I would say. Uh, same thing with the triceps. The whole arm, really. <laughs> Forearms probably are not too bad. <laughs> that's because Every lift I've ever done, it's just been all forearms. <laughs> Bench press, all forearms. And curls, all forearms. Lat pull downs, all forearms. <laughs> hmm. uh, it's not quite six yet, so I'm a bit tie tie. Indeed. Oh, yeah. This is like 19 out right now. Son of a gun. May it be 60. 60 degrees to 79 degrees for the rest of 2024. Despite whatever cataclysmic effects it'll have. On the environment, or what that will signal for the state of the earth. Uh. Okay, let's give the guns a bit of a rest while I update this board.
you know, and you probably noticed the eating hasn't been uh, as uh, consistently low as it's been recent weeks. Probably average like 2,500 calories a week this week. And that's okay. I'm in this for the long haul. And uh, I'm getting over some issues I had. So, yeah, we're just taking it as it comes day by day. And, uh... <clears throat> figuring out how to break the obsessiveness, the fear, <clears throat> the worry, all those negative emotions that have likely caused me to relapse in the past. So I'm just sitting in this moment, taking it as it comes, and trusting that my mind and my body will do what's right for me. And I think breaking that negative emotionality with it, the fear, the, <clears throat> the need to control, I think those are the, the greatest gains for me right now. I'd much rather be at my weight right now with the growth that I've had over the past, we'll say two weeks, than to be 340 today. You gotta trust the process, my friends. Trust the process. Okay. 40 pounds. Do 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 do. I'll be doing a short walk in Thor this morning. It's too freaking cold for marathon walkies. Oh. <clears throat> he was in rare form yesterday. He punishes me when we don't walk enough, for sure. And I don't blame him. Oh, yeah. Oh, goodness. Oofa, oofa, oofa. 12 it is. Jumped up a rep. Didn't feel too slow and controlled, though. Try to be a little more mindful about that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Papa, Papa, Ratsy. <laughs> Oh, so what is this supposed to be? 20 on each side, and then seven pounds for uh, the weight horn on each side. So 
So it's supposed to be 27 and a half, half of that, so 13.5. Maybe. I don't know. I think uh, dumbbells. Uh, I've been able to do upwards of 30, but uh, probably not as, uh, as quality reps, so who knows. Also, the tension, uh, tension profile of a cable machine is so different tension throughout the whole rep versus <clears throat> difficult, easy, 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 easy <laughs> with a dumbbell. There's ways to hack gravity. Uh, not so much with the cable machine. Uh. I have to watch that uh, Patriots documentary. I think it's called Ni Dynasty on Apple TV. I'm excited to watch that. I think it just came out yesterday. Uh, uh, very nice. Very nice. <clears throat> Jumped up a rep on each set from 11 to 7, 11, 7 to 12, 8. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, that is excruciating pain. Okay. That hurts a lot. No pain, no gain, right? Wow. Whew. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. <sighs> oh, 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 
no. Yeah, it's fun. We're having fun. <sighs> Papa, paparazzi. <laughs> Uh, let prayers later, that'll be fun. We're progressing on the not yet on the faithful. We're progressing not yet on the low row and not yet on the low shrug or the high shrug. So no more progressing other than the lap prayer for the rest of the day. Uh, do 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 love me, Papa, Papa Razzi. All three of the curls, I'm still progressing on it. Oh. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> if you get a chance, watch uh, Dr. Mike's technique breakdown or assessment of Eric Janicki. I've noticed myself, I was like, man, his, his form looks really good. And Dr. Mike gave him like a 97 out of 100 and basically said he's about as good as it gets when it comes to form and technique on lifting. And he's jacked to shit. And that's always hot. to wrap. Hey, it's a, it's a nice little Saturday. Hope you're all enjoying your Sunday. Hello there. Let's let the good times roll. And the fun continue. We are doing lap prayers for 45 pounds. We got the face pulls and the low rows. Oh. 
still, I don't know why I was so tired this morning. I think I'd woken up pretty early, slept from maybe like 10.30 to five, and then the sleep machine Thor was laying on my lap while we were on the couch, and I was dozing off. I ended up missing Ty, so I'm back on my shit. <laughs> I just saw a meme about that. Being uh, back on one's shit. Don't exactly know what that means, but it's funny. Uh, yeah. Let's get it going. <clears throat> uh, left shoulder isn't 100%. Uh. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, that's all that. All that all the time. Yeah. I know they say it's Red Bull that gives you things, but I think it's lap prayers. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my goodness. 19. What the fart? Oh. I was able to do 14 at 40 pounds on Tuesday, 16 on Thursday, and now 19. Oh my gosh. My lats must just be firing finally. Wow. What the heck happened to these lat prayers? Man, it's like my lats finally started firing and oh, I can feel it. It's just right here. Oh, I've actually never noticed how much the lats are. Surprise, surprise in the back. I always thought of lats like here, but that's, that's only when they're beefy enough that they they feel like they're sticking out to the front, but yeah. Wow. Man, those are such high reps. I almost want to do a bigger jump so I could get to a lower rep range, but... 
We'll just jump up to 50 next time and see how far we go. Hmm. If you would have told me a month ago, I would fall in love with these lab pairs like I have. I wouldn't have believed you. Hmm. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I did eat my oatmeal today, and that was fun. Give it another go. Oh, okay. Well, that first set really wore me out. Oh, seven. <laughs> 19 and then seven. I know I could have rested more, but still. Down to 30 pounds. Some of that bad boy wobble. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Saw this great quote on addiction. It was like a joke tweet or something. And it said, uh, addiction's like having this voice inside your head that's constantly telling you to burn your life down to the ground. And you, I think it was something like, and you kind of want to do it. <laughs> you kind of agree with it. It's like, yeah, it's an external voice, but at the same time, like, you know, well, no, I shouldn't do this or it's bad for me, but it's like, well, I kind of want to. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Ooh. Nope. Ooh. 13 it is. Jumped up two since last time. We'll take it. Yeah. Um... You know, I've been thinking about it a little more just because this week has been an interesting experience of, uh, I would say, <clears throat> spent a lot of time with my girlfriend. Um, I would say richer meal choices than I would have uh, if I hadn't been spending a lot of time with her. Um, Bigger portions than I would have at certain times. So, what was it? Was it yesterday or I think it was two days ago? Yeah, two days ago we had like chicken and stuffing. And I ended up taking like twice as much stuffing as I would have if I was on my own. Um, I don't know how much of that is. Like sometimes I don't want my girlfriend to eat, uh, feel like she's eating like much more than I am. Um, it's not that I try to go like bite for bite with her. Like last night I made us, uh, she, she had a craving for a bologna sandwich and we still had leftover euros from, uh, Valentine's day. And it was like, I didn't eat like a full bologna sandwich just because I was making her one. I did my like open faced just because she was having two pieces of bologna. You know, I knew that's what she would want. Didn't mean I did. And I mean, in the scheme of things, it's like a joke, like a piece of bologna is 50 calories. The, the bread is 120. I'm just making the point that I don't feel the need to like match whatever she eats, but I probably eat like a little more than I would. Um, so this week has just been a, a bit unusual. Um, it's almost like, uh, so usually I, I have the fastballs and then the change-ups. I might have a bigger meal and then I have a smaller meal. I might uh, have like, uh, you know, yesterday was like a richer breakfast than, I'm us than I usually have. Usually when I have a richer breakfast, then I have uh, a lighter lunch. Or I, if I've eaten a lot throughout the day, I don't have the need to have like a lot of sweets at the end of the night. But because I was with her, like we had, you know, cake later and a sugar cookie. So at any rate, um, I'm just setting the stage, setting the context. It's allowed me to think a bit more, huh, as I want to do, about the eating. And what, I, what I've come up with is I think before I saw any, any overeating or any eating that wasn't like, perfectly in control or perfectly optimal as like problematic and now I'm seeing it's like if you're under an extreme deficit if you are eating a couple thousand calories less than your body requires which is what I'm doing on average throughout the year uh, when you're losing a let's say a half a pound a day on average um, you are eating anywhere from 1,500 to 70, 1,750, uh, 1,750 calories less than your body requires. So we'll say I'm eating anywhere from 40 to 50% less than my body requires. It's like <clears throat> when you overeat and as an overeat, you eat closer to what your body requires than what you're, you're trying to eat. That's not overeating <laughs> and, and it's not like weakness. It's not, I mean, it's not even binging really. All it is is uh, you're not able to overreach and you're not able to, I guess you could say like, it's not, see, it's not control. I don't know exactly how I want to put it, but you're, 
I mean, you, yeah, it's just, I, I don't know. So, okay, I guess l let me put the point this way. So if one person normally needs 3,000 and they eat 4,000, uh, they're overeating by 1,000, right? Is that the same as the person who needs 4,000 and they're on a diet and they're eating 1,000 and one day they overeat and they eat 2,000? It's like, uh, I don't think... <laughs> That was like overeating. That was overeating with respect to what they were trying to eat, but that's not overeating. So it just kind of changes my perspective on what it means to have a, a worse day on a diet or to eat more than you planned on or you thought you should have. It's like it's all playing with house money. Like any, any day you eat even one calorie under what your body requires, like you're, you're doing something good for your body. Like that's, uh, it's a win, right? Any, any day, and I mean, especially as you're losing weight or if you're lower than whatever your, uh, your old weight was, like every day you spend not going back closer to whatever your heaviest weight was, that's a win. I mean, if you stay the same weight for a month after having lost 20 pounds, that's a win. That month was a good month. It might not be a great month. It might not be an amazing month. And obviously, if my goal is to lose 15 pounds on average every month this year, if I only lose five pounds in a month, that's a bad month based on my goals. But that was still a really good month. So I think that's, that's a perspective I'm gaining that I never had before because it was, as with most things in my life, it was all or nothing. It was perfect or shitty. If you ain't first, you're last. Um, and now I think I'm taking away that stigma and understanding it's all good. And I don't think that will, that will discourage me from, being, from doing my best. I think if anything, it'll allow me to do my best because it'll take away the fear and the sting associated with not doing my best, right? So I know there's, there's all these adages about burn the boats so you don't go back. You know, that's what they say like back in the day in, in war, if you keep your boats on the shore when you're invading somewhere at the first sign of trouble, you're going to run back to your boats and you're going to flee. So once you land on that shore, you burn your boats, so then there's no turning back. You know, don't have a backup plan. Don't have a safety net, as immortalized in uh, the Batman, uh, the Dark Knight, what, Returns, the, the last bite, um, one, um, where he's able to make a, a jump without the rope. With the rope, he didn't try as hard as he could. So I, I get that. I, I get that machismo stuff. Um, that's how I lived. Like I said, I did that for 600 days where I would have sooner died than eaten over 2,000 on any one of those days. And obviously it didn't work for me <laughs> in the long run. So I'm having to try different tactics. And I think this period has just been about me learning uh, about, I think, why is it that I don't have perfect control? Why is it that I put so much pressure on myself? Uh, and maybe, yeah, why is it that I had regained the weight like I had? And I think that might have been that it was just like digging deep into, or pu pushing past whatever healthy boundaries there were and really probably like fucking up my hormonal system, my adrenal system, just that uh, a car, how about this? A car, if you're, if you're making, uh, if you're doing a road trip, which, which car is likely to, uh, well, I don't care. I don't, I don't need to make a fucking metaphor. Point is, um, there's a difference between going a hundred miles an hour nonstop for a month versus maybe going 120 miles per hour, 22 hours a day, and then like taking breaks in between. Like it, taking those breaks, I think it probably makes it less likely that the car will go kaputs. And similarly with the adrenal system, and this is part of the reason why the last time I lost the weight, 
I did lower days and bigger days, and that was supposed to help with my ghrelin and my leptin levels and all these hormones. Uh, but obviously, <laughs> that wasn't the, the panacea that I wanted it to be, so there's still some issues, so there's still more for me to learn, uh, and I shall continue learning. <clears throat> Oh. Nope. Uh, seven it is. Uh, went up on both sets. We'll take it. And I saw this, uh, interview with Kobe where he was talking about like worrying about failure, worrying about success. And he was saying that it's all wasted emotion. You're either going to win or you're not. You're going to fail or you're not. And either way, the next day you're going to have to wake up and work hard, right? So uh, I thought that was a, a pretty, pretty wise statement that ultimately if your focus is on the hard work, whether any one moment is, is successful, the work continues and ultimately on a long enough time scale, you will have whatever success that you want. 5.30. It's like me worrying about, you know, will I be X weight a year from now? Will I be X percent body fat? Will I have X amount of muscle? It's like, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Maybe it'll be January 1st. Maybe it'll be February 1st. Maybe it'll be December 17th. Maybe it'll be four years from now. Like, and you, you have to really surrender to it because <laughs> you don't have control. You, all, all you can control is this day. And it's like... So let's, let's just focus on the matter at hand and let, uh, leave fate in the hands of God. You know, uh, man ponders his path and the Lord directs his steps. So just allow God to direct your steps in the right way and the path will, will end up right and hopefully righteous. Oh, yeah.
Nope. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. <sighs> 14 again. We shall move on up. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, <clears throat> I don't want to overthink things and, and worry too much about having these uh, great insights and making sure I figure everything out. And um, sometimes you can overthink things. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of lessons I still need to learn about myself, about my behaviors. Uh, I don't think I'm, I'm necessarily like out of the danger zone. And I think probably the ultimate realization is I'll never be out of the danger zone. Uh, I don't quite subscribe to all of the, uh, what principles of like AA or any, any, uh, sobriety, basically ideology that believes like you are powerless over whatever that thing is. I think that thing is very strong, uh, but I don't, I don't think we're powerless over it. Um, I think we need to respect it. <laughs> I think we need to recognize uh, its power, its danger. Uh, but I think, I think a more nuanced approach is to realize the danger is always there. But that doesn't mean that you need to be afraid of it. You just, you just need to respect it and you need to not flirt with it too much. Um, and finding that, that narrow path is a bit like walking a tightrope. <laughs> and there's a certain danger inherent in it. And that's why some, well, and with other things, it lends itself more to uh, total being totally sober. So something like alcohol. And I guess the, the equivalent for overeaters, binge eaters, obese people would be, here are the 10 foods I most abused. I'm just not going to eat those 10. And that, I mean, I, I would say that would be a pretty credible approach if you fully bought into the AA model and you just, because I mean, Yes, I think, I think overeaters, binge eaters, I'll bet they overeat everything or most everything. But I'll bet most of us have certain trouble foods and certain foods that we have, we have almost like worn those neural paths so many times that it's just, it's a lot harder. Let's say I have abused chicken cacciatore five times in my life where I've eaten way too much of it. And then uh, there's the Taco Burrito King, Super King Burrito with cheese fries. So, or we'll just say like Taco Burrito King. And I've abused that 10,000 times. Um, and no, no way it's that many. We'll just say a thousand just so it doesn't sound so ridiculous. Uh, but maybe, I guess. So let's say a thousand times. Obviously, me going down that, that path with Taco Burrito King, going to eat there, I am more likely to relapse and to abuse it than with something like chicken cacciatore. So the person who says, you know what, Oreos are a trigger food for me. And I mean, what would mine be? I'll, I'll try to game it out right now. So I'd probably say Oreos, uh, Swiss, uh, Little Debbie Swiss cake rolls, um, those mini uh, Entenmann's pies or whatever company makes them. There's a few different companies that makes them. Um, yeah, those uh, Reese's Cups, I could just keep eating those. Uh, and then, yeah, Taco Burrito King. Back in the day, it was uh, McDonald's, but not so much anymore. But we'll say McDonald's then. Um Pizza, just just in general. Um, hmm. I wonder what else. It used to be like easy cheese and crackers, but easy cheese is uh, their recipe has changed and it's gross now. It's like liquidy instead of a harder cheese. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, actually, something about like either my my OCD, whatever you'd call it. Uh, I I typically abuse the same foods. Now I would definitely get into uh, different states where I was like eating this food a lot or that food a lot. But I would say over the course of my, uh, we'll say the last like 20 years, I would say those have been, uh, I mean, I don't know if those account for half of the calories I've eaten, but probably, uh, you know, a big portion of them. Like I've had different seasons where I eat a lot of super dogs and I would eat like two at a time and that's not even the worst thing. But, um, Taco Bell was problematic for me for a while. Um, so yeah, I mean that, you know, this is a, a long uh, tangent, but the point is if you believe in that addiction model, you probably could just go for eliminating certain foods and you just see it like with alcohol. It's like the, the alcoholic says, I'm not in control of beer. Beer controls me. I cannot drink beer. So similarly, you would say, you know what, ice cream is a trigger for me. I, I don't know how to eat it moderately, or at least I've never. So therefore, I'm just going to eliminate that risk. Uh, for me, I don't believe in elimination of any kind. I don't, I don't buy into that, that any one, any one food, you might have a bad, bad run of luck with it. And yes, there might be more danger associated with this food than that food. Uh, the odds that I'm going to abuse sushi compared to uh, chocolate cake from Costco, yeah, it's like radically different risks. But you just account for that. You know, you just recognize the inherent dangers for each for you. So, yeah, um, I think I'm in a good place of not obsessing too much, but I still, I still want to learn. I'm still trying to be mindful. Um, yeah, feeling good, feeling happy, lifting's going well. The scale is just stagnated. I mean, and that's, that's what happens when you're not walking as much, uh, not being as strict on going to striking and eating more. Like, <laughs> surprise, surprise, uh, the scale has stagnated. Um, and the truth is the scale could have stagnated even if I was doing everything perfectly. Um, but I think, I think on some level, I, I think this might be somewhat semi-conscious because I haven't, it's possible I haven't like fully given myself over to trusting things. And I think, I don't know, maybe that's a rationalization, a little horror logic, but I, I'm, I'm going to just say I trust that things are going as they should. And I have a feeling my lack of, not lack of control, that'd be the wrong expression. My lack of, of perfection is actually serving me more right now than my perfection. I think I suggested that earlier, like the path that I'm on, the things that I'm thinking about, um, the, the, the uh, slowing of the pace on this marathon, I think ultimately is is better for me than if I was 10 pounds lighter. And I, I guess that's probably the best way of me conceptualizing it. Like I'm running a marathon. I noticed my foot started hurting. I have a foot injury. I've had issues with it in the past. And I know that if I keep up this pace, there's a high risk that I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cause a serious injury, not be able to finish the race. And for me, the marathon is not this year. The marathon is actually, we could say the next five years, if not the next 50 years. So because of that, since I know my, my ankle is, or whatever, my foot, whatever I use, is, is starting to have a little problem. And I know that if I just go a little more slowly for the next mile or so, I will be able to, uh, it'll have a chance to recover and then I'll be able to finish the race no problem that's worth me losing a little uh, time and going at a slower pace than having to go, you know, full speed. So I think that's the best way of conceptualizing it. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I want to go underhand on these. 
Oh, let's see. There we are. Yeah, I think I'm gonna mix up the grips on this, get a little more, more lat engagement. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> nope. Ooh. 14 and 8 again. Stayed the same. Jump up and wait next time. Okay, good stuff. Let's keep moving forward at the right pace. Hello there. To try to play around with this, see if I could end up using this as like a incline press. <laughs> this could be like, oh yeah, that's fun. Could just do the handles. I should probably try it with the handles. Yeah, that could work. <sighs> Uh, let's try it. Handles instead. And then obviously, if it's more stable, if I could have something behind my back, I could uh, put out more force. Uh, so this is a, a Rogue Fat Pad uh, by Donnie Thompson. So I have the normal one for this bench before I had installed that. I wonder if I could somehow rig it up here then I would just press against it. Probably not, but it's fun to think about things, right? So be like this. Be out here, maybe it'd have to be a little lower. A little weird. <clears throat> doesn't feel great on my shoulder. I gotta be honest, pressing in general doesn't feel great on my shoulder. Sh shoulders. I wonder if I could fully develop my chest just through flies. So if so, I think I'm better off just doing flies. Somehow, some way, the moment I start pressing, crap starts happening in my shoulders. Must be an impingement or something. I can't believe I was able to uh, do uh, overhead press and bench press as long as I did, as consistently I did, as I did in 2021. But it was like near constant shoulder pain the whole time, so. Uh, 50, so I just need a 10 on each side. Yeah, if I could build it without pressing, I'm gonna do that. Uh, I wonder what would be the, the final fly. Probably just, just like chest height. So instead of downward or upward, like a lateral fly. And then that would be more for the sternal pack, something like that, either that or 
that front raise for more upper chest. Okay, got 70 pounds. Let's see what we got. Oh, and we're back to low first. Uh, Oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. <clears throat> nope. Oh, ooh. Felt it real nice towards the end, though. Okay. Moving on up. Last time I got nine, this time I got... 11. Oh. Yeah. So I got this fly. This, ooh, ooh, my traps are feeling it. And maybe if I could go just out here. I could also do like a crossover. But I think probably best would be this. <clears throat> play around with it a little bit once I'm done with my shrugs. Uh. Uh. Oh. Mm. Live in the dream we are. Live in the dream. Some good UFC fights on tonight. I shall be watching. That should be fun. I think Kenzie Dern, Ian Gary, uh, Henry Cejudo. What is that little irritation I got on my leg? I wonder if that was from a scratch from Thor or something. Oh, and I asked my dad about that first weight set. He said, uh, I asked him like, you think I was like six to ten, and he said that sounded right. He didn't remember, but uh, yeah, it's funny. <sighs> we'll go ahead and split the difference and say eight years old. So, thirty years ago, I endeavored to build this body to look like the heroes of yesteryear. Lion O is probably one of my first inspirations. Colossus from the X-Men was a big one. I remember bringing the back of the action figure, the card, to Sarah Van Every's mom's uh, uh, hair salon. It was called Maria's of Lincolnwood. And, uh, oh wow, that's sticking out more than that is ever. Um, the tricep. And I brought it for her for the inspiration of the flat top I wanted because I wanted to look like Colossus. So Lino, Colossus, Wolverine, Cyclops, He-Man. And Goku, and then Goldberg. And then 
Uh, Ryan Reynolds was a big one. Good stuff. Okay, let's get in on it. Oh, yeah. Better late than never, right? Oh, yeah. Nope. Okay. The other thing is, if I would have gotten it when I was young, chances are I could have burnt out on it and not cared about it anymore. See a lot of guys who are jacked in their 20s and 30s, and then they, they just get over it, and then they let their body go to shit. If, <laughs> if it takes me until 43 to get it, I am definitely keeping it for the rest of my life. No way am I going to work this hard and then let it all go to shit. So I'll be jacked from, uh, well, I mean, who knows with AI, maybe for all eternity on Earth, but we'll say 40 to 90 instead of 20 to 40. I'll take that deal. That's a good deal. Uh, 65 pounds. So that's uh, five on each side. So we're at 25. What's his name in Inglorious Bastard? Bastards. Um, they're talking about the deal at the end. It's BJ Novak and Brad Pitt. What do you think, Pewter Schmidt? You take that deal? Yeah, I'd take that deal. Yeah, I'd take that deal. What was his name? Um, okay, so I hit seven and three on Tuesday, seven and five on Thursday. Let's see what I got today. Oh, yeah. Uh, shrug it up. Already shrugged it out. Time to shrug it up. No. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's burning. Oh, nope. Oh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, that hurts a lot. Yep. Oh, we're cooking with gas. Okay. Let's update the old board. Rest up. Uh, lifted at four. Did not do that. Striking really shouldn't count because there is no striking on Saturday, but F it. I'll, uh, I think I'll put like an NA, not applicable. Yeah, but then you have to go out of nine. I'll figure out like next week something to sub it out with, something to be productive on or something. I mean, I could have gone striking this morning, so we'll call that a loss. And then I'm going to do dinner, but I didn't do the walk. You know, this is just a rough guideline. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's 
see. Minus. Sky High is a very funny and fun movie. If you have not had the pleasure about the kids of superheroes who go to superhero high school. Michael Angarano, some good Kurt Russell. I would say good Kelly Preston, but Kelly Preston is always good. There we go. Oh, did I not update? No, today's the 17th. I updated that. Okay. Here we go. Let's finish it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh. Okay. Arms first. Oh, wow. Whew. Nope. Oh, I think that was pretty close. Oh, I don't know. We'll call it six. Damn it. Oof. Oof. Felt a lot on that. Either way, we have progressed. That nice slow progression. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good times, good times. Till tomorrow, friends.